Hey everybody, and welcome to the Block Party. We do nerdy stuff, podcast, D and D, the whole shebang. I'm your host, Captain Zeus, followed by my co-host Novaverse and our guest star over here, Relatable Panda, <laughs> aka Panda. Panda What's going Panda. on? Uh, today on our first episode of this podcast, which we have not named, but there will be a name for it in in the title obviously um it's gonna be basically how we think star wars should have ended and we'll go one by one you know kind of talk about it and uh just delve into the star wars nerdiness and uh, we would like to hear your opinions so don't forget to comment in the comment section how you think it should have ended because we all didn't like how it ended at all <laughs> um i'm gonna start off first uh overall um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say this, Kylo Ren. I liked what they did with him. I think he was a pretty good villain. I liked the way they he was torn between the light and the dark, like every Skywalker. Over, we'll, we'll do this overarchingly. If we go with the way Episode Seven and Eight went, and it was just Episode Nine, like basically the ending, they shouldn't have brought Palpatine back whatsoever. Um, I think they should have had it as like Kylo really going into i'm going to destroy the jedi like i'm going to destroy everything about my past and create something new not necessarily be a sith but basically sith like like a new religion so to speak that's just dark side and then ray honestly i like how ray died i liked her dying because her character was kind of just crying most of the series um that are just like not really doing anything just kind of getting like helped by the plot so uh, her sacrificing herself that's cool what we can do is like she's still trained by leia she's gonna fight kylo like two or three times in that end movie and then at the end final battle she dies and kylo's like what have i done my mom's dead because she's over here trying to help ray beat me and stuff and I don't need to turn my sin. No, no, that's not how it's going to happen. But she definitely should be like more of a gray Jedi, not actually a Jedi Jedi, because she does have yeah. tendencies to use the dark side. That's where they should yeah. probably like make gray Jedi's like canon, because that would be dope. And then Finn, which we all know is force sensitive since day freaking one, they should bring him in and be like, he's being trained with Leia slash Ray, like it's not really training, but it's training. It's like when he's got free time, he's like, oh yeah, I know, I'm learning stuff. And he helps battle Kylo and he's like a true Jedi. And then like, you know, Ray could die or she could almost die or kill Kylo. It's, it's honestly up for interpretation on that end. But basically bad guy loses, he's either dead or like turns, you know, turns around and does something different. Um, or Ray dies and, or, you know, doesn't. But I think if she lived, it'd be more of her as like a gray Jedi kind of thing. And Finn's like an actual Jedi. And Finn starts like, he doesn't start a Jedi order, but he's like, goes out there to recruit the other force sensitive people out there and bring yeah. them into the fold and essentially starting a new Jedi order. Kylo, I, I mean, he was a great villain. Like I was saying earlier, um, he could be like, go to some ancient Sith location or I don't know, entity and like learn more about the dark side and try to just kill off the light side, not only for himself and his struggles, but the, also the symbolic reason of his past, basically. Um, I liked how in the previous script for episode nine, he went to like this alien creature and then he learned some more Sith powers and then he kind of just like killed that alien creature. And I was like, that's cool. I like that. But I mean, it's there's a lot of things they could have done and probably should have done. I didn't like how when they went, they went back to Endor and there was like clones or not clones, but like stormtroopers that were all like, yeah, we all left too. We just kind of ended up here. Um, and it was like a force told us to be here. And I'm like, that's dumb. That doesn't need to be in there. Like Ewoks, they don't need to exist. <laughs> but I, def I definitely think Palpatine shouldn't have been in there. I think there should have been a final fight between Kylo and Rey. Because that's kind of what most of the series is. Each movie has ended 
some way, shape, or another that for the first two that they fought and it was like a tie slash Kylo losing. <laughs> but that's, I mean, overall, I think that's how it should have been more of like Kylo either dies or like goes back to be like a Jedi because he's like, I'm tired of this crap, man. But then Finn's definitely acknowledged as like a Jedi slash force sensitive person. Not the whole, Hey, I have to tell you something because I love you, but it's really because I'm force sensitive. Some bullshit is what it is. But him and him and Ray need to be a thing. Even Poe and Ray. <laughs> I, I could be okay with that. But I mean really it's Finn and Ray. That's that's definitely the ship there. Rose, I don't know why you exist. Don't need you in there at all. That everyone like, talks Rose. Dude, she she yeah. wasn't needed. Her purpose was dumb. I mean, and then, and then I think Leia, the way they ended her in the last in episode nine was kind of like how i'm thinking where she like uses all of her strength to help turn kylo to the light side i mean not in the sense of just like saying his name and then dying more of like a force projection kind of like you know luke did that would be cool you know a little like hey we siblings we gonna die the same way but i don't know i feel like they could have delved more into the lore especially with snoke coming from the unknown regions and that's kind of like where Kylo could have went. And maybe that's where the Knights of Ren... Like, I wanted to see more of the Knights of Ren as well. Because those guys were badass looking. Like, and honestly. They got bodied. Yeah, then so they get bodied, yeah. I'm like, the Knights of Ren should have been like some ancient dark order from the unknown regions. And Kylo, like, defeated the previous leader and is like, I'm the leader now. And they're just like... They're kind of like Praetorian guards where they're super dope. But they just protect the leader. Yeah. Which also Praetorian guards, freaking amazing, in their weapons, freaking amazing. So yeah, that that's just my gist. I mean, we can go movie by movie later, uh, but that's my overarching gist of how I think it could have possibly maybe went. A lot of gist. Yeah. <laughs> gist in it. That was quite a bit. That was quite a bit. It's quite, quite a bit. A mouthful. So yeah, honestly, okay. So I, I love Kylo Ren. I, I the character fantastic you know like you were saying just the struggle of you know like who really am i throughout the movies and so whenever i watch the movies i always keep in the back of my mind that the force needs to stay balanced you know it can't be too light it can't be too dark and so that's why honestly i can live without the sequels you know i mean original trilogy prequels and then bam but because darth vader does it very well he starts off in the jedi order and then turns to the dark side but then realizes you know i need to help my son and basically sacrifices himself and basically he he blends himself and realize that was basically the balance right there he brought balance to the force so that right there bam clear you know could have done that Mm. but having having kylo see him struggling right there it was a kind of like a little like an hint of darth vader and you know that's why he you know we always see kylo kind of looking up to darth vader not only because of you know family relations but more like you know symbolically symbolically yeah and so i mean him dying i'm fine with it i guess I would have been more fine if physically they made it, might have shown us the dark and light balance with Ray and Kylo still alive mm-hmm. to physically show us. But I mean, I guess him dying because of a good cause is it's it's fine with me. I guess they really wanted to stick the message to Ray, in which it was more of Ray, you know, being taught to be good, good, good. Oh, but guess what? You're a Palpatine, so that's bad, bad, bad. And so then dumb, yeah. dumb, dumb. You kill your your family, and so it's good, good, good. I don't know. I don't know where the balance really is because where is even the balance? at <laughs> even at the right. end, she doesn't even accept that she's a Palpatine. She's like, no, I'm I'm freaking Skywalker. She said Skywalker. Right? She said Skywalker because yeah. the and, dumbest thing ever. And I was like, no, you're you're not. I you're not. You know, <laughs> 
Luke might have been there and all that stuff for you, hitting you with a freaking or Stick. tickling with you, you with a freaking leaf, leaf and all that. Yeah, but <laughs> that's the force. <laughs> that's the force. <laughs> but just taking his name, yeah, I'm pretty sure his freaking ghost was flipping out. Like, what? What is this? What like, did I teach you? Go be a hermit. <laughs> yeah, Ray I mean, Kenobi. Yeah, uh, so Palpatine too being brought into this, I guess that's pretty interesting to be like, hey, by the way, our main protagonist is connected to the main antagonist, but it's like, dude, just let him die. And I always bring <laughs> yeah, this up definitely. in the beginning of uh, episode nine. Mm-hmm. Emperor's still alive. I'm like, okay, I can kind of see this. Yeah, and it's, it's he plausible. Has a huge fleet, like an army of, not like of live people ready at his disposal. I'm like, how are they how are they alive? How they're what? just under yeah. ice. <laughs> ice age two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess I can do with that. And then t- okay, technically my ending, Ray should have died. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with that. I mean Alfredine like shot that lightning into the sky to bring down those rebel ships. I was like, there's no way she gonna and then she's like, lightsaber, and he's like, yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> she, they, they, she is a Mary Sue, and I don't know if you guys need a definition of a Mary. I would, Sue. I would like a definition. I would like a definition. But basically, she, she's a character with quote, quote, no flaws. She basically just keeps on progressing and progressing. Yeah. And nothing seems to be a struggle for her. I mean, shoot, we saw in all three movies, maybe, oh, yeah, you know, maybe she's struggling with the force and all that stuff. Not even. Yada, yada, yada. She just and learns then, how to yeah. freaking mind tricks everybody. Then she somehow exactly. self-teaches herself how to use a lightsaber and the force, technically. I know she gets a little training from Leia and nine, but like it's before, seven, yeah. Beforehand, though, it's like, what, what the hell is this? So, yeah, she should have died. I, I think <laughs> the end of seven, which when, when she fights Kylo, she should have got rocked, <laughs> not died, but got rocked. I Whole mean, Kenobi or Anakin kind of thing, where they lose an arm. Yeah, <laughs> like literally, Luke had to go through that. He literally had his father. Have to cut his freaking <laughs> arm off twice. Well, twice. twice, 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 twice. And 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 what happens to Ray? Oh, first time dealing with a lightsaber. I guess I'm just gonna about to body you and beats Kylo, who's I'm I'm, I'm hope trained by Luke, <laughs> trained by Luke, and, in the end. I know he leaves. Uh, yeah, I know he leaves later on. And then Snoke, and you're telling me he lost to someone who just grab learned what a lightsaber was that freaking week. No man, that's ridiculous. So, that's me. I I won't let Panda talk because I I can just feel. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll bounce back to those topics later. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Let, let's so, go overarching. Go ahead. Overarching. Um, I feel like eight. They should have stopped it at eight. I feel like nine shouldn't have even been a thing. The way that eight ended with Luke finally accepting his own fate and just dissipating into the Force. Just like Obi, just like Yoda, just like Anakin, that was a perfect way to end trilogy in the in in the saga. You don't need to pick up with Rey, because much to Nova's point, how can somebody who has never known what a lightsaber is just pick it up and start <sighs> dismantling people with it, <laughs> who doesn't have yeah. any training but yet can somehow mind mind swipe a stormtrooper? Exactly. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? True. But they made episode nine. In my opinion, Kylo should have died by Ray's hand in their battle when she stabs him after finding out Leia died. I would have been cool with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I the way cool that, that happened kind of made sense. It led up to it. Exactly. Uh, Kylo let his guard down because he felt his mom passing. But they continued on with that. What I don't understand is the whole plot for Palpatine was have Rey kill me, possess her body, and start a new order with her being, essentially. That's what Palpatine goals was. Rey kills Palpatine, shooting his own 
late like his own electricity yeah. back at him and dies. Yeah. Boom! Kylo comes back, saves her. You had you, they missed the perfect opportunity to pick up where Palpatine failed. Which was? Palpatine should have possessed Ray's body right then and there. Yep. Not and being resurrected I, as the I, Dark One. I could go as with the that. Empress, as the Empress of the Empress. New Earth. That would have okay. been dope. That would have been dope. You know what I mean? Kind of. Yeah. But seen. they missed that mark. Um, and honestly, like I said, I strongly do believe that eight should have been the end of the saga. Don't make a nine. Kylo got his his shit rocked by Leia or by Ray. Um, by Rhea <laughs> by Rhea yeah um, I agree with you Zeus uh, Finn and Ray should definitely be a thing thank you thank that you love, that love triangle was just a little off it was yeah that was it, way off um, Rin that's what it is Rin <laughs> Rin Rin yeah um, force sensitive children yes. one thing that I will say overarchy rule of galaxy they have something with right arms Right? <laughs> they have something with right arms. Um, we saw Anakin lose his right arm to Doku. Doku. Only oh, to re-lose it to Kenobi. To, to Kenobi mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then again to Luke. <laughs> he lost it three <laughs> times in, he lost it in three a span times. of six movies. No, like five exactly. movies. And then he lost his arm three times. over here losing his right hand two times. To the same guy. To the same guy. <laughs> Wouldn't it? I, I think with Ray picking out the lightsaber, I don't know. This is just me she going on. She should have lost her right hand. She should have lost real. it. She should have lost yeah. it. Um, honestly, though, the progression with Kylo was really good. Right. I have to give him that. Kylo was a very good addition. Um, dropping the bombshell of him being Han Solo and Leia's son and kind of building that character arc in what three movies, two movies, really two, but yeah, of uh, yeah, Luke trained him, Luke was gonna turn on him and kill him, but psych, he's gonna drop a building on Luke and then kill the Jedi so that he's trained. It's true, that, that was a very Anakin Darth Vader thing to do, also. That was a good callback to being related to Vader in every sense of the way. Yeah. But the family ties that they had with Ray, uh, or Kylo, were good. Palpatine didn't need to come back. At all. Um, yeah, I mean, again, with Luke passing, going into the Force, that should have been it. I was good there. I was kind of disappointed with episode nine, though. I think everybody was like at first watch it's like hype but because like so much is happening and then second glance you're like there's so many things wrong with this even at first glance the ending i was just like what wait why are you doing two lightsabers as if that's cool what (laughs) eight was see so we could have ended on eight but eight was it it was painful to watch because yes i mean I have an unpopular opinion about that. But how how oh, are we gonna God. build? Oh, what's it called? Who's raised parents? Who's raised parents? And then Snoke's like, "Yeah, you got raised by no one. You're a loser." <laughs> and it's like, "What? What? Why would you do that?" Right. Hurt the feelings. That's why. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So that, and then the whole thing with like this connection with yeah. Ray and and what's it called? Kylo. Kylo. And it's, it's Snoke is like, oh yeah, I did that the whole time. You you guys have nothing. <laughs> and it's like, Snoke was just such a like prankster. He he's over here like, yeah, all like you thought you guys were cool. Nah, actually, no. I did that. I was watching you the whole time. <laughs> yeah, right? he was watching on cams the whole time. You guys got pranked. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I, it's just it's a mess and then i'm pretty sure me and uh me and zeus we've seen the uh what's it called throne room i guess you quote quote or snook's room fight scene yeah um slowed down and the yeah. terrible choreography there yeah there are some yeah. times when the when troops were just <laughs> like waiting oh. their turn <laughs> to die and it's like what do you attack them <laughs> kill her <laughs> do yeah. something 
especially there's the one scene where Ray decides to drop her lightsaber and in turn it should have technically decapitated like because her lightsaber was holding the guy's weapon but she drops it to do a little like undercut yeah but i'm like that lightsaber was the thing holding the guy back so he should have slit Killed you, you. <laughs> but yeah you know, exactly. he just holds his position <laughs> oh okay we're cool guess not because yeah it, she doesn't get hurt right it's uh there's a lot of miscues that star wars has done i know i was telling uh zeus about this but in the scene where doku cuts uh anakin's arm off he cuts it off right here oh yeah he was telling me about this in the next scene he has it a little bit more and then all of a sudden, when we see him with the, the metal arm, it's his elbow down. Which I didn't realize this. So how did... Yeah, if you look it up and you watch it in slow motion, you can <laughs> see where it's right here, where he cuts it off. And then all of a sudden, he just regenerates all that and then metal from elbow so, down. So what really happened was, I, it was the lies of the Jedi. And it's really just the elbow <laughs> down. Like, could it be like fake skin, quote, quote? to could make it like that part that could be too because if mean, i'm not mistaken it was like up to half his arm in episode three that some of it extended mm -hmm. to um so it could have been like his robe or whatever like just kind of like didn't Probably. show all of it uh but yeah, I, there's definitely miscues in the star wars side for oh, sure, yeah. exactly. for sure. Definitely. also also how did he not die being burned alive his will to survive. Yep, that's and that's get it. Revenge. Well, I mean, he was about to die, and Palpatine's like, "I'm gonna save your ass." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love how he literally just walks up on him with two troops and just like, like right wow. on time. <laughs> well, wow, <you> also <laughs> when he when he got like owned by Yoda, he's like, "We need to go now." Anakin's about to die. <laughs> he's like, "I can yeah. sense it from here." I'm sensing Correct. so much. <laughs> Let's also. I sense again, he going, doesn't have the high ground. <laughs> going back to the the right right arm right ligament thing, um, oh, I'm blanking on his name, but Sam L. Jackson, Mace Windu, Mace Windu, Mace Windu lost his right right limb too <laughs> when he was uh, fighting fighting Palpatine. Everybody's a freaking righty unless you got like multiple I, arms. Right. I, I believe you sent that one meme, uh, Zeus, where it's all like uh, the scene where Palpatine, uh, he's on the ground uh -huh. and then <laughs> Mace Windu is confronting him and he's like, you know, he's like the headmaster of all this. And he's like, he also like, was like controls sand. Yeah, he also controls sand. <laughs> and then Anakin just looks at him like, what the heck? He's like, and he you? Kills, and he's yeah, like, oh, shit. Palpatine. <laughs> That's how it should have ended. There we go. End of the podcast. Right, right there. <laughs> so I have an unpopular opinion going back to episode eight okay. real quick. I actually enjoyed it. I loved episode eight. Now, there were things I didn't like, <clears throat> such as the whole casino planet deal. Didn't like that. that. Was not necessary. Yeah, I don't think that was necessary to have that it, part. They, not mm -hmm. only was it, like, too political... The CG was terrible, and if you take it out, wasn't really necessary. Like you could I be mean, fine without watching those scenes. They could have because the I think the really the scene honestly was for those kids that they meet, which they mm -hmm. never go back to. And then um, the scene to meet that smuggler dude who a bit later yeah. on. Well, yeah, yeah. but th but the they could have done something was, else exactly to they, introduce him. Exactly. They could have they could have still had the casino, but more of like. I liked how they switched it where they they were trying to get the actual dude, but they got like a sub like someone completely different. I liked that it's a little like <laughs> fu kind of deal. But yeah, they could have did it completely different, not political. Even if you had the force kids in there, force kids, you, sh you should have did it like come with us, leave your exactly. chains, unshackle yourselves. You know, preach a style. Django, <laughs> yeah, Django over here, <laughs> and then be like, we got force kids, we go to raise them for our force yeah. army but I, I did i did like episode eight i liked how it took place directly after seven it's a it yes. was really anticipating because you're like oh y'all know they were about to get f now you're about to see how they're about to get f i liked how they were basically getting owned the whole movie and they had to go to another planet and nobody was responding to them i like that little switch where it's like 
Previously, when they call for help, someone comes help. This time, no one's coming to help. It's, it's different, but it's also a parallel to the previous trilogies. And then the whole, hey, I'm going to go and jump to light speed right into your ship. Dope yeah, as frick. Okay. So yeah. that, that's cool and all. But a good majority of that movie was them trying to outrun the enemy. That was the whole, and they would just talk like, like, okay. I'm like, what are we talking about? Why? why? But there was so much going I, on. I know they didn't have like help and all that stuff, but that was basically all they were doing was just chilling in the ship and waiting to die at light speed <laughs> honestly and i was like you could have light speed already you're wasting but they time. tracked them through light speed so they would have wasted that's why fuel. they didn't do that's it. why they couldn't no, no 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 i know not to escape but more like hurry up in light speed and, and run into them so i can well they had to get every okay. oh yeah yeah <laughs> they, they could have yeah, gotcha, gotcha. it up <laughs> but i i mean i liked the whole snoke deal where he was like i'm i know y'all too are like the pillars of each side. So I'm gonna bridge you and try to control you both. And I like how exactly. he did that. I I liked how Luke was a hermit again because he basically followed in the footsteps of his masters. I liked how when Ray left, Yoda was like, "You really didn't learn anything." I'm like, it makes sense because that kid was like rushed stubborn. into all of his trading. Yeah, he was a stubborn kid the whole time, and he had mm -hmm. that you know still was a stubborn kid even as an old man. I mean, I didn't like how he died from via force projection. I feel like he should have actually went out there to fight and then just did the whole Obi-Wan thing where he's like, okay, I'm done. I'm gonna and die. then well, close. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I did it. Instead of the whole, like, you were a force projecting, yo! <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> things I didn't like, but there was a lot I did like. I'm fine with him killing exactly. Snoke. That's fine. The whole thing isn't about Snoke. Like he's he's like the Palpatine for this. Basically. He's just the back villain controlling it. Kylo yeah. killing him, that's fine. People were all upset about it because he's like he was a dope character, so much we wanted to know, and now he's dead. It's like, have you not seen Game of Thrones? Like <laughs> stuff that you don't want to happen happens all the time. Exactly. Every episode, yeah. Every <laughs> episode. So I'm like, that's that's fine. And what they could have did in nine was kind of like they did similarly in it where they did a time jump after that. Everyone's already like done. They've trained some more. The battle's getting down to the last, the final fight kind of deal. Uh, everyone's all ready. It's going to be all out war kind of deal. That's fine. But I, I did like how episode eight was. I actually, I enjoyed 90% of the movie, to be honest. And like I said, the Praetorian guard scene was dope. First glance, when you rewatch and you realize the bad choreography, it's kind of like, oh gosh. But those dudes were dope. Oh yeah, yeah. they definitely. were done. definitely, definitely. That's that, that's my stamp. I know no one wants to agree with me, but I think episode eight was not only needed because it built more that. into the connections to people, but it was enjoyable. Yeah. The one thing that I did enjoy about Snoke's death scene was he narrated it himself. Yes, because that was a plot twist for me, especially because you see. You have this scene where Snoke's overlooking it, narrating everything that Kylo's about to do. And you're over here like, well, this is the end of Rey. Like, yeah, thank okay, goodness. I've accepted it. Like, <laughs> yes, finally. And then they pan to his hand and then the lightsaber starts moving and you're just like, okay, that's a little odd. What is he going to do with that now? And the minute that he says he's about to light it and kill his true enemy... And he just shuts his fist, and you just see it go straight through Snoke. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. Yo, I flipped out well, when I first saw that. <laughs> Legit, I flipped but out. But the thing is, too, that also made me kind of question Snoke's ability. Because if Snoke could really tell everything that Kylo was going to do, how did he not predict that? But he did know he was going to do. Because he said, strike his true enemy. He doesn't know his exact thoughts, but he knew his will. He was a powerful force user. And Kylo's like, my true enemy. What Snoke was assuming was it was Rey, because that's kind of like how he uh, raised okay. him and bred him. That's why he yeah. wanted him to kill her. But he's like, I'm really trying to kill you. Like like most Sith yeah. apprentices, they want to kill their masters. Masters 99% of the time know it. I mean, he kind of knew that Kylo wanted to like 
kill him, but whatever. Yeah. But when he did it, he was surprised because he's like, I saw this happen, but not the way I expected it. Yeah. yeah. Another thing that I liked what they did in 9 was uh, bringing uh, Hugh as the spy for the First Order. Oh! Yeah. That, that, that was one thing that I was really interested in, not for the fact that he wanted to rebel against them, but just for the simple fact he hated Kylo. Yeah, that was, that was pretty that, funny. That was, that was a good way to, that was a good way to implement a petty factor to him. Very petty. Like, in all honesty. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, that was great. And I love how he gets owned in, like, every movie, whether it's, like, yeah. a force hit or, like, getting punched or just, you know, getting just <laughs> shot down right in the middle of the brig. Just, he's always getting owned. He never has a dub. Exactly. Yep. What's but, yeah. it called? Another, so I, I think about this quite a bit, but okay. you see it definitely in the sequels. Um, when making them, I don't really know if they understand what a lightsaber is <laughs> because you not only do you see almost anyone wield it like they're just like oh yeah i have a lightsaber now you do it and doing whatever like for example when finn's finding that uh episode seven mm-hmm. finding that one troop and i'm like all right finn i get it son <laughs> and then you see ray using a lightsaber for the first time uh, so not only that uh, okay so not only that like training wise it's it takes a long time to mm-hmm. understand the ways of a lightsaber yep. but also like how it functions so this end of the scene uh episode seven when kylo cuts up finn's back that man should have been dead i'm sorry <laughs> yeah definitely should have been dead i don't know about no you know cutting maybe like cut to, in half to the meat bone but he should have been cut in half like half you know what i mean yeah like some people are like oh it was just the tip of kylo's lightsaber i'm like dude it don't do you know matter. what vital things you're you're hitting back here he basically yeah he what the heck so yeah um i'm sorry friend you should have been dead um <laughs> yeah i just i don't think i mean they understand his Honestly, lightsaber wasn't a stable one so that that yeah, also could definitely. factor into him just going into a coma because yeah i mean it's a lightsaber i agree like that should have yeah. if he did the whole back thing it should have done like more damage like leave a really bad scar he needs like prosthetics or something not just oh yeah. i'm gonna just come out yeah of this he's freaking up and tube. running yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. problem and i'm like no i don't seem right no flaws, i mean no honest wheelchair Honestly, though, that's what I think, too. Like, instead of having him come out like like a freaking sprinkler that you use on your lawn. Like, yeah, sure, where was the wheelchair? Where was where was his... I need uh, to be in bed. Where was his help to move, maneuver? Because, yeah, he got a lightsaber to the back. If it didn't kill him, it should have paralyzed him. Right? Or at least do from, some kind of damage from where the, he needs something to help exactly. him. Exactly. Like, if you look at the path of Kylo's lightsaber, it looks like it trails all the way up Finn's spine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It go, but so, it's also at an angle, too. So it's like. You're hitting it, spine, exactly. dude. You're yeah, no, no. Spine, I, I'm though. not disagreeing. <laughs> like, it's also at so, an angle. So you got some meats. <laughs> you're, you're still hitting spine. You should have been paralyzed. If not dead, at least paralyzed. Or unless he is force sensitive in the force helped heal him I'm which we know he's force sensitive we know he's force sensitive just joking so, because that brings me into another topic force healing oh. in episode nine what that in was god's just... no it was that okay. i know it's possible but... yeah so go no, ahead, go ahead. That... here I'll, i'm gonna say my real quick yeah so what they did was in the mandalorian like episode eight or whatever like the second to last episode of the first season the child, or AKA Baby Yoda, force healed yes. one of uh, the black dude, the freaking uh, <laughs> Apollo Creed over here, healed yeah. him. <laughs> and one week, almost a week and a half later, the movie comes out where she Ray could force heal. Now it's it's kind of like semi known, semi canon, not confirmed yet, but. Obi-Wan healed Luke when he got attacked by the Sand Raiders. He straight up, like, force healed Luke. Now, it could be debunked. I I haven't 
heard anything to the contrary. I also didn't dig too deep on it. But it seemed like he freaking force healed Luke in episode four, where he's like, he got jumped. Hmm. And so it was kind of there. I mean, they didn't really divulge into it much. Uh, but when Baby Yoda does it, everyone was like, yo, that's cool. Like, you're exchanging your life force to heal someone else. But when Ray does it to a freaking snake for no reason, doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah, the purpose exactly. was to show that she could do it, so that way she heals Kylo. But that that's not something Leia knew. So there's no way that her or yeah. Ray should know. It shouldn't have been in their arsenal, technically. Cause... Or exactly. if, if it was in the ancient Jedi text. If it wasn't there, there should have been some proof of her learning about it. Oh my God, she exactly. she teaches herself obviously, so she would not have read that. We know this already. <laughs> we know she wants this. to teach herself. <laughs> that's that's another thing about Ray's whole character arc that I did not like whatsoever. It's like you mean to tell me that she can touch a light? Like I get the whole touching of the lightsaber, and oh crap, I'm connected to the Force somehow, some way. Like that makes sense, but to be able to just pick it up and yield it with no training. Like she never had any training whatsoever in episodes seven and eight. Correct. Yep. Well, eight, so it's she like, does. eight well, she does. Okay. But... Yeah. Eight, she has a little bit, yeah. but cutting a rock, but, yeah. but in episode seven, <laughs> those, those, those poor villagers did not love her at all. It's like, they don't like, like me. I wonder why. why? <laughs> just destroying their home, their ancient land. My favorite rock. <laughs> I just love how, how Luke comes out. He's like, what happened? I was cleaning my blaster and it went off. Like, come on. You like, don't think you honestly, know something's up? Like, come on. I, I do want to no. go into the Jedi or the, the lightsaber training real quick, though. Um, yeah. Finn, I think what happens, uh, him using the lightsaber, people are going to, people flip out about, but I'm like, if you think about it, the stormtroopers, some of them have trainings for that or against it. Hence yeah. the reason why that one stormtrooper had a lightsaber-esque weapon. Like there is weapons out there that, that aren't true. lightsabers that can combat lightsabers, as yeah. we saw in episodes seven and eight. And so <laughs> I'm assuming that he had training in that weapon field as well, which is why he wasn't too baffled about what it was or not necessarily what it was, but how to use it. Because he's like, oh, I've had okay. training on this before. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. at, at, there's probably like really, if you get really deep into it, you probably find it out. <laughs> We're so deep. lightsabers, yeah. they technically can't cut into anything, right? I mean, am I right or wrong? Or With force? Yes. It yes. by itself? I mean, question mark? Oh, well, with itself, because it's technically what? Like, energy? Well, it's, it's, know, it's, yeah, light, ba know. it's light beaming off of a kyber crystal. I guess, right? Yes. Yes. So, so okay, so, because that's what makes me think sometimes. Because I know, you know, a lightsaber would just be rocking everything if it just, you know, was meeting everything. Because, <laughs> you know, like, I think about, like, Clone Wars, for example. You know, whenever they fight, like, a mana guard. And you know, they don't cut this the pole in half, and they're like, "Okay, Magna Guard, you're done." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or and then like the 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 Finn scene uh, on Episode Seven, they, he doesn't clearly cut through the thing. Obviously, there's some resistance. So I, I mean, it's probably like, at, typically what we see is that purple electricity ish That's, thing, yeah. yeah, that that rejects it. And I don't know what technically it's called, but so I, I have something to that add to the add to that as well. Yeah. Um, the Mandalorians have weapons and like shields that combat lightsabers as well. Yes. So because it is like the Kyber crystal energy, I think there are materials and different types of energy that can combat mm -hmm. it. Not necessarily known, known, but like it, it's out. Kind there. of. The kind Mandalorians of like, have it. Um, yeah, those guys have it too. In Clone Wars. Uh, I, fr I, I think it's the Xylo Beast. I don't remember its name exactly. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I, You're going to have to refresh my memory. You got uh, to go into it. They, I, all I remember is Clone Wars. They go to this one uh, Separatist place. They do an EMP to knock out a bunch of droids. But then a giant monster with like scales and stuff mm -hmm. comes out. And they call it, I believe, the Xylo Beast. And they wanted to like neutralize it 
Like, oh, I so know. So they can use yep. his like use his skills as clone armor and stuff like that. Yeah, but we can, can see stuff. Yeah, yeah, we can see that. I don't even think the lightsaber could have nope. affected it. Yeah, Blasters and I was like, lightsabers couldn't. I was like, holy it. crap! So there, there's obviously things in the universe that, which is cool. Like they show, like even through the shows and low key through the movies, that there are weapons and materials and whatnot out there that can combat lightsabers because they're not necessarily these OP weapons. They're just yeah. the weapons of the religions of like Jedi's and Sith. Yeah. And so it does make sense that, you know, when up against those grievous droid guards or up against that one stormtrooper that their lightsaber didn't go all the way through, it's probably because more or less it's either made of material or the electricity is a type that combats lightsabers. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So one thing that I would have loved to see, and I know that it was more of like a side character kind of thing, but I really would have loved to see Boba have some form of vendetta against the Jedi. Or <laughs> literally as a kid, I have something seeing to say your dad's that. head chopped off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. His head should like how are they just the gonna breeze that. past it? You know what I mean? <laughs> like I would have loved to have seen Boba step up as like seeking vengeance for that essentially. Like that yeah. would have been perfect for me. Like I would not have complained whatsoever. Because so, they don't do them justice in the movies, but go on. So exactly. to help your arguments, they do do him justice or will, because he's going to be in the Mandalorian season two. It is confirmed that Boba Fett's going to be back because he did survive the, the what's it called? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. He, yeah. he survived the Zartlac. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, at the end, or like for an advertisement for the Battlefront 2 game, they showed him coming out of there. Um, mm, nice. If I'm not mistaken. I know there was some kind of like cut scene, so to speak, of him leaving the pit, but he does survive that. And in The Mandalorian Season 2, we will see Boba Fett in there. We're going to see Ahsoka. Nice. We're going to see Rex. Um, okay. I, I don't know who else we're going to see, but I think we'll probably have, we'll see the aftermath of the original trilogy for Boba uh, because okay. it's not it's only like a, a year or two if anything after the Empire fell is when the Mandalorian takes place it's yeah, not too far yeah. there's like a timeline in which all movies and uh, what's it called side pieces mm-hmm. connect with each other so it's like, very like, like it's either Rebels, close together or really far off. like all that stuff so yeah but yeah so we will see Boba <laughs> and see what happened after hopefully um, but that to, to kind of help your uh we need to see more of yeah. an argument. Now, yeah. honestly, I think Mando was a way better Mandalorian and bounty hunter than uh, Boba Fett was. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe we get to see what he's really made of. How dare you? Hey, we didn't How see... Dare you? Okay, look. We didn't see Jack from him in the movies. <laughs> in, this, in Clone Wars, we only saw him as a child, and he really didn't That's do much. not fair because they don't put it in the movies and in Clone Wars. Okay, they so technically... leave it in the comics and I was in like, the yes. books. The comics and the books made him OP. Like, he had his own lightsaber and went part against Darth Vader. Like, literally. Now, that's all not canon because... That's all legends. Once Disney us. bought them, yeah. they're like, yeah, yeah, none of that stuff is real. <laughs> get, that <laughs> get that mess out of here. But if we're, we're going off of canon for all of this. Yes, if we're going canon. Yeah. He if, is a weak character. If we're going off of non-canon, yeah, it's he is a dope very character. disturbing. I'm sorry, but he deserves so much better. He deserves the game. I mean, he's not even a real Mandalorian, <laughs> so that'll be cool to see in Mandalorian Season 2. Well, he's not. You, I know he's a clone, but come on. No, man. even his father wasn't a Mandalorian. <laughs> I know he's not. I know. <laughs> I'm like they're not Mandos. They just steal stuff. We yes, steal they things. They steal stuff. They stole his armor. He's a Mandalorian in my heart. <laughs> Your heart is corrupted, sir. Well, yeah. Chop my head off then. Yeah. Chop that off. Okay. Yeah. So episode seven. Um, how did you guys feel about that overall? Watching it for the first time and then watching it now. How did you guys feel about it? We'll we'll, we'll start with uh, Panda. Yeah. Honestly. It started off, it was a good way to introduce, you know, Poe, Finn, and Ray in a sense. 
And then, in my opinion, BB-8 was, like, the best droid that, like, I've seen <laughs> since, like, R2. And Agreeable. 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 So, I also love the banter that BB-8 and Finn have, where Finn legit, like, they, Ray and BB-8 find him, and then they want to kill him, because he has Pose Jeff. <laughs> that was funny. Like, I loved that. I loved the way that that played out. I also love Finn's way to try to lie out of it. It's like, oh yeah, I'm with the resistance. Like, it's like, yeah. Uh, and it's, then the, the this is what most people from, look like, but not all of us. Some are different. <laughs> and then the callback from Han, like, it's like, you know, women always find out the truth. Like, you're not gonna keep this up forever. Like, right, I know yeah. who you really are. But they did really well with it. Um, it was a good way to introduce Kylo as well, I feel. Because, okay. like, we saw him and he's just like, oh, well, who's this? And then they who, also who dropped is? the whole bombshell of being Han's son. It's like, well, okay, he's Han's son. If he has that ability, we know who the mom is. We don't need a we don't need that one. We ain't got a <laughs> point. We ain't got to put. We already put two and two together on that mm-hmm. one. But the way that they brought Leia back to, and that whole awkwardness of Han and Leia seeing each other for the first time in like years, was okay, like, um, hey, how's it going? Like hey, we just we're just gonna ignore everything that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was a good segue. I love where they ended episode seven and picked up an episode eight. Like, okay. that was the smoothest yeah. transition that they've had in, in the Star Wars saga. I can agree um, to that. Rather than being, oh, 10 years later, you know, going from episode one to episode two, two we yeah. have a 10 year jump where it's like, okay, well, this is weird. Um, Everyone bro. looks the same except for Anakin. He just had a huge exactly. growth spurt. It was okay. Right. <laughs> hey, and you remember me also- 10 years ago? I still love you. <laughs> I love you too now because you're of age. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> and then the whole his face with that bomb show. <laughs> Uh, let's not talk about episode uh, two. It was a terrible movie. Anyways, Nova, I episode like seven opinions. Attack the clones. We're gonna okay. talk about episode seven first. Okay, but episode seven, I, I, okay, I think it was pretty good. Uh, Starting off the sequels, you know, just seeing, okay, just seeing that they're bringing in a sequel first time. I'm just saying from, like, my experience, it was Hi. like, what are you doing? Oh. You know, that this because I <laughs> love, I love the original trilogy and the prequels. I know a lot of people hate the prequels, but I, uh, I think, like one. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. And then the original trilogy is just... I know there's some flaws, but you know, what's flaws it in every sequel or every but trilogy. But I, I mm-hmm. see the seven come out, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna still watch it. You know, Star Wars. Right. I still, th- exactly. I think they still did very well though. But you know, there's some things um, to take away because, like, for me in the beginning, I, I did not care for Kylo. I thought he was a very like whiny, like I'm not oh. getting my way. I'm gonna throw tantrums, like. Just like yeah, his me, grandfather. Me, me. Like, I'm, I'm going to kill... I'm, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm going to kill my dad because... Screw you, dead him! I can't... <laughs> like, he, like, he, he, like, if he didn't already have it, like, he should have had, like, the hair covering the one side of his hair and just, like, whatever, dead. And, like, yeah. My chemical romance in the background. It's not a yeah, phase. Yeah, for real. Because, like... It's not a yeah. phase. But the later dark side on, isn't a phase, dad. I, the dark side isn't a phase. That's a good one. <laughs> but <laughs> later on I, I, I learned to uh love kylo ren's character so there's that um you know introducing finn and ray i mean ray's an entirely different story but <laughs> Don't finn, i like finn <laughs> yeah. poe you know as a side character i thought he was very good too as well yes, bb8 um let's see i mean the first order you know they're cool they're cool. They're there. <laughs> they exist. <laughs> I mean, the what's it called was very, very dope. Um, their what's it called? I can't even remember what it's called. Their 
I don't either. Fan. Not the Death Star. I, the, the, the Star uh, Killer Base. Star Killer Base. There you go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Destroy. I mean, the scene where they're just destroying planets. I'm like, that was oh, amazing. That was awesome. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Death Star was like, all right, we gotta stop here. Destroy what? it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and park park the Death Star <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then destroy the planet. And then, but Star Killer was very impressive. You know, using a planet as a weapon. You know, and stuff like that. The biome. That was really, really. I thought I thought that was pretty cool. So there's that. Um, but overall, I think episode seven. It's out of the the three sequels, I prefer seven out of the other two. There you go. It's understandable. Yeah. So um, I, I'm gonna say for seven, there was a lot of Easter eggs. Star Killer Base for one, named after. Star Killer, the, the Legends character who was yeah. Darth yeah. Vader's apprentice, one of the most bad Apple freaking characters and in existence. Never get to see him because never get to see him again. Yeah. Um, I liked the the whole Han having a kid deal because that's also a cue to the kids from the books. That's also in Legends of like Han and Leia having kids and um, Luke and Mira Jade having kids and they being like super strong, but half of them turned to the dark side. I like the little little cues there. I mean, they switched around the names and whatnot, but it doesn't matter. Um, the, overall, I enjoyed the movie. Um, I feel like they they teased things that they either may not have intentionally teased or did tease and just kind of effed it up throughout the series. For example, Finn. I knew he was force sensitive since I saw the movie the first time from uh, episode yeah. seven because not only did kylo know who finn was by his number after that you know slaughter of the village when the planets were being destroyed when the new republic was being destroyed finn's the only character that hears the screams every other character doesn't hear the screams they just see the explosion but when you go to finn he hears the screams and he's like in <laughs> horror and he's and like Kylo's yo just anyone else just like hear this <laughs> just like uh just doing my job sir yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But Finn, I, I, I've known since day one, was Force-sensitive. I didn't like how, like, in 8, they didn't really push it. And then in 9, they didn't really push it either. Like, nope. 9 was probably the best place like the to push it. In 9, remember, Finn pointed to the one ship that was doing the They signal. did it at the end, where no. it didn't matter. Yeah. And he was like, it's that ship. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, why is it that one? Oh, I just have, I have a, a feeling. feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just have a feeling. And then yeah. when the clone or the troopers were like, we left, it was kind of like, he's like, a Force. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Q, um, Q, yeah. Q Han pumping back up. That's not how the force works. That's not how the force works. <laughs> um, I loved Phasma. I like how her armor was made of from Palpatine's yes. ship, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, because that was dope. Really, they did a lot of symbolism in Episode Seven. They worked so hard on it. Ray. Yo, I just heard a child scream in the background. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm are, you in the, are you in the Jedi Temple? <laughs> <laughs> There's too many of a Master Skywalker. What are we going to do? Ignite his lightsaber. <laughs> Eat my lightsaber. <laughs> Anyways, um, there was a lot of symbolism, a lot of like throwbacks and Easter eggs in it, and I loved it. Like, wa- I can watch that movie over and over and be satisfied. I agree, Ray should not have been able to use the force so well for like no reason her lightsaber or not her lightsaber her staff is made of like two lightsabers you guys know that right yeah each end is a lightsaber i think one of them was darth maul's which makes sense because his is a dual wield and they kind of tease that she's gonna have a freaking dual wield staff lightsaber which i should have seen in episode nine so she basically was using that up until like episode nine like even in episode eight she was using that more than the actual lightsaber yeah, she threw it away. <laughs> yeah. Which, that should have been dope. They should have made her do the whole journey. It's like, there's only one place left to get a kyber crystal, and you gotta go venture there. Like, that would have been uh, something cool to see. Been, so, that would have been awesome. That's how she would have gotten the yellow lightsaber, and it's, like, dual-ended. And it's, like, the last thing Luke teaches her, or Leia teaches her. Like, that's something like that they could Like, how to make a lightsaber. That yes. was pretty dope. Yeah, like, a nod would... to, like, we're gonna rebuild what was lost. Like, that would have been dope. Yeah, like, yeah. Yep. Just use my, use my hammy down. God. Yeah. Gosh darn it! Now that I'm Freaking thinking about hurts. this, it makes me pissed. <laughs> right. Anyway, I'll get into that later. Okay. But <laughs> I, I, I love Snoke and the mysteriousness of him, and I liked how they always projected him as a bigger figure than he what he actually was. 
Um, yeah. Starkiller base, I think, was just kind of like, we don't know what to throw in there as a big bad, so we're going to put this in there. I, it kind of didn't make sense to me when, when they shoot it out and it splits into five and perfectly hits all of those planets. I was like, that doesn't that, yeah. work. But whatever. Lasers, lasers do that. <laughs> <laughs> lasers splinter. Like, uh, but whatever. Like, they destroyed it. And they're like, it's another Death Star. It's like, it's not. It's bigger. Like, yeah, oh, it's my bigger. God. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, guys, it's just, just find a hole. But just there find was, a hole. All yeah. you need to do. I love I loved that movie. I love the first two of the sequel trilogy. It was absolutely amazing. Like, there was, in the first one, for sure, there was so many things that were just like, just, just eat, sir. I'm just eating this up, man. Just over and over. I loved Poe. He was a great character. I loved Finn. He was a dope character to build off of. Ray was Ray. Um, yep. See. I, I don't think <laughs> yeah. that. Not only First did I not Ray. want her to be force sensitive, I'd rather her, like, not exist. Because, <laughs> jeez, so, it was, it was right. bad. Nothing oh, against Daisy Ridley, but Kylo Ren carried this whole trilogy on his back. Oh, that yeah. man's got some serious back yeah, issues after definitely. that. Kylo Ren was a dope character. People were complaining about him. And I'm like, if you think about it, I'd, I'd complain too. Like, shoot. Like, like, this man, everyone's getting disowned and, like, owned by this freaking child who knows nothing about anything. Exactly. I'd flip out too. And then Snoke was like, I'm sorry, um... She bested you. He's like, I know the writers did this. I have no say. The, writer, the writers <laughs> did this. <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall that. over here. I just, I love that too. See what you said, where Snoke almost like breaks that fourth wall and says everything that everyone was thinking. It was like, look at you, bested by a girl. It's like not so much as who it was that bested him, but. It was a girl really? that knew nothing about like, anything. A girl that knew yeah. nothing. Like, Gosh, and then, much to your case with Finn being force sensitive, I knew that from the first scene that they had with him as a stormtrooper. When he's I, able right, to yeah, look I at the body that. and, like, get the blood wiping on his mask and, like, know that, that like, he should have kept that high key. He should have kept that. That would have been dope. Going into battle with a blood soaked freaking stormtrooper mask. That would have been dope. Right. But he's ignites like, lightsaber. <laughs> this is wrong. Proceeds to help Poe escape. Like Okay, hold on. Okay. Where I'm hearing I'm hearing words. Is someone watching something? No. I could literally hear is anyone listening to anything? No. It's coming from you. No. Ooh. You. Godly, it's coming I, from you. I can hear it now. Yeah. Gosh darn it. What's it called? Are you watching something? I'm not watching anything. <laughs> I'm watching episode seven right now. I'm watching episode seven. Is Dante right watching now. something? Dante, are you watching something? Dante's watching something. Tell him to, tell him to either move or turn it down. I can hear that. Dante, can you turn it down? <laughs> We're almost done. Okay, you turned it down. Okay, I'll have to, I'll have to edit that out unless you guys want me to keep it. I don't know, but, jeez. Okay, um, back to what you were saying. I but yeah, I mean, that's that's, I don't know, I don't know. Um, you want me to go to what my topic was of uh, episode nine? Yeah. So the lightsaber thing, yeah. I'm gonna just throw to that. Why did she not have her own? So she made her own lightsaber. Sweet. It looked disgusting. It was this short three inch <laughs> thing that flips over like it's some kind of gear and it's just yellow. Yellow, perfectly fine. We don't really get to see that much in the live action you know, movies. It didn't look good. They didn't explain how she got it or how she knew the intricacies of doing it. Mm -hmm. And then Leia had exactly. her lightsaber, which made sense because Luke trained her, probably taught her how to make her own lightsaber and was like, here's yeah. mine. And I'm like, that's cool. She could use, you know, their lightsaber for the time being. But then for some freaking God knows why reason, they take both two lightsabers, the only two in the other galaxy, and buries it deep in the one place Anakin hates. Sand. Sand. 
Like, look, Anakin's ghost is probably like behind Lou. Like, I'm gonna beat that girl. I'm gonna freaking force beat the crap out of her. I hate Sand. What does she Why do? Does she know nothing do about her past? Right. I don't know. Honestly. And then Luke and Leia are just like, yeah, you bury those useful weapons in the sand that has just a lot watching of history. Her. Yeah. Watching her do it. And then don't get me started on the Skywalker thing. What's your name? Oh. First of all, who the frick are you? And where this did you come from? Lady. Like there's no, there was no freaking city, no town, not even a hut nearby that abandoned place. And she's like, there's been no one here for a long time. Shut up, Jar Jar Binks. What the frick are you? (laughs) Yeah, it's Jar Jar, the the Sith Lord. It's the Sith Lord Jar Jar. And then she's like, Ray. And then it's like, Ray who? And I'm like, we know you nodded at this earlier, but do not say what we want you to say. Just say, it's just Ray. That's fine. No one cares about your last name. Last names were never important. It was blood that was important. Yeah. And then she's like, yeah. Ray Skywalker. And I'm like, Skywalker. go kill yourself. Go freaking kill yourself. Kyla shouldn't have brought you back. You <laughs> <see>? <laughs> That's all he has. She's like, Ray Skywalker slits the throat. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh my god! One of the one of the great callbacks that I think god, they had was well. in episode five i believe or six where anakin saves luke like yeah. anakin finally breaks free from vader and saves luke and then dies yeah. where he's when a- they're celebrating when luke is celebrating he looks over to see yoda mm-hmm, mm-hmm, obi mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. anakin standing all together mm-hmm. looking at him mm-hmm. that was one of the best moments in my opinion where it was like he finally came back full circle. It was and good. to Nova's point, that's yep, the balance yep. that was needed. I, I mean, I will agree that sequels weren't needed, but they were enjoyable if they hadn't effed up episode nine. They effed yep. up everything, man. Because honestly, like, if we think about it, seven with its flaws was fine. Eight with its flaws was all right. Nine was where they should have, like, okay, we're going to go into overdrive and fix everything. Yeah. Finn should have died like so many times. I'm just gonna. <laughs> so there's the lightsaber scene. I just thought about this one. Yep. It was episode eight when he decides, "Hey, I'm gonna drive my thing into that giant freaking tank laser, or whatever." Oh and yeah, then and Rose, Rose is like yeah. Rose. Oh! Said, so not only not only do we see the vehicle's metal coming off and melting, he's perfectly fine. You know what I mean? And so Rose saves him, and I'm like. What is this? Dude? What is he made out of? He just doesn't die, dude. Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know about. He's that. actually a Yoda species. Like he's half human, half Yoda species. That's why he can't die. The force is so strong with him. It's so strong that he so just strong. refuses to die. Honestly, like that, that man is like a Han and Anakin fused with actual yeah. logic. <laughs> like yes. that's it. You give that's those two characters logic and fuse them. That's that's Finn. He's a friend. Maybe, he's yeah. a god. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. That's t- I just uh, stop. Yeah, you gotta think. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do you know who didn't think? J. J. Abrams. J. J. Abrams. Yeah, J. J. Abrams. Yeah, nine. I like how you say it really fast, though. It's it's so more pleasing See, to the ears. So yeah. what happened was, um. I, I don't know who who's in control of like the first two. I believe it's the first two, and then they switched who was in control of the last one. I don't know what was. J.J. Abrams was directed the seven. Seven. Ryan Johnson directed eight, and J.J. Abrams directed nine. But J.J. Abrams was supposed to do all three. So yeah. So what happened is seven. J.J. was like, "All right, we're going places," and then they get to eight, and he's like. <laughs> I'm throwing everything you fucking do out of here. <laughs> and then JJ gets back onto it and he's like, oh, you thought you were going to throw everything away from me? I want to make it even worse. <laughs> and he throws the Palpatine. I'm going to throw all of the stuff you worked for out. <laughs> oh, what? You were trying to make a good movie? I want to make your movie end like shit. And he, <laughs> yeah. Oh my so God. even with eight, like they, they could have still built off of that. Like there was so like they time jump. You can just time jump and not have to say anything about it, and then just go forward. Like pe- you see it happen like all they the did time in the other movies, in all the other ones. Like they time there was jump, a time jump between 
four to five and then five to six. There was a, at least like a year or two time jump. And then between one to two, it was like 10 years. And then two yeah. to three, it was like, what, five years, something like that? I think Lifetime skis. it was, okay, so I read up on it. Um, episode one was 32 years before uh, episode four. Episode two was 22. And then episode three was 19 years before episode four. So there we go. It was I mean, a I mean, three year time close, jump so. between two and three. No? Huh? So there we go. It I mean, was, it wasn't too far. So. All right. No. But see, the only other time that they had a callback to the time jump was from episode one to two, where we see Anakin literally say, I haven't seen her in 10 years. Yeah, literally. Other than that, and I'm like no glad. I'm so glad you haven't time seen. Time is not relevant. What's it called? Exactly. After episode two. Um, so two things. Actually, the, <laughs> I'm gonna say this part because I I brought this up to Zeus, and it is episode two. So um, <laughs> so we have a senator wanting to kill oh. <laughs> Padme. <laughs> so who does he send? He, he says, Count Dooku, I want you to kill Padme. Count Dooku says, yes, I can do that. But Count Dooku goes to Jango Fett and says, Jango Fett, I need you to kill Padme. <laughs> Jango Fett said, okay, I'll do that. Jango Fett instead goes to another <laughs> bounty hunter to go kill Padme. Yes. She says, fine, I can do that. She then sends a robot <laughs> to go kill Padme. Robot, go kill Padme. Robot goes off to go kill Padme. Gets better. Robot opens the hole and says, Centipede, go kill <laughs> Centipedes, go kill Padme for me. And, and the centipede said, okay, we can do that. And so the centipedes go and they failed. And that's why there's a whole chain. It's a whole chain of, of events. Disasters. All all had happened was if Dooku would have just like or if Django would have just like did it, then it would have been fine. I know. Or and if instead, droid, I mean, and instead of Django, because because Obi Wan and Anakin go to chase that bounty hunter. Instead of Django, after watching them leave and go to Padme's room and just kill her, no, Django just kills the bounty hunter, so she get, they get no connections. And, but they see him fly off, and I'm I like, mean, it's, what the exactly. Heck? I mean, that's smart. I mean, I, I'd rather prioritize them not connecting than the job not being finished. Because you can always go finish the job, but you can't can, you can't always take back the words that that person said. But there was so much but time s- between hand when they're like jumping from like the cars and stuff like that. Well, you to, gotta track the person. To pop a cap in her head real quick and then <laughs> exactly. go over to finish off the bounty. And I love how like, instead of him actually doing the deed, he's just watching the person, watching the droid, yeah. watch the centipede <laughs> do it. And he's like, yeah. oh, this is going <laughs> terrible. Oh, there goes the centipede, oh, the droid. And and, ooh, I need to take care of that. <laughs> oh, dang it. No. <laughs> also, episode two, one of the the worst, I'm saying it, the worst Star Wars movie out there, episode two. The chemistry between Padme and Anakin was oh. so bad. I mean, the actors hated uh, each other, and you could tell. Yeah. The, the love story didn't make sense. It was so forced. I mean, they teased Same. it in the first episode, but it was like borderline pedophilia. Well, not even borderline. It was almost. And they're like, yeah, we're not. We're gonna do a time jump. We'll, we'll, we'll not touch that again. And then like the CG was so bad. There was, oh my gosh. And then Anakin could his, Chris uh, Hayden Christensen could not act in that second one. In episode three, he did great. Like he stepped yeah. up his game, especially since he was in Jumper. Like you, sh- you can see that his acting was yeah. A one sauce, but episode two was so bad. He's just like sand. Yep. I hate it. The sand people. I hate him. I killed the mamas, <laughs> the daddies, and the babies. All oh, the babies too. I killed them. And Padman's just like, I want to smash you so hard right now. <laughs> and I'm like, what in the heck is going on here? It's like, did the red flag not come up when he said that he killed women and children? I know, right? It's like, like that, that's oh, foreshadowed oh. episode three. More women and exactly. children. It's like, oh, you killed women and children? Let me comfort you. I'm going to comfort you with what? the rest of the seals. What? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. And then the only other thing is like they can, with the force, they can predict and like they can almost, they can see the future, obviously. Only some, not all of them. Only yeah. some. Correct. Correct. Only cool ones. Anakin was able to see Padme dying during childbirth. Correct. How did he not know that it was because of him, though? 
Like, how could he not see? Because that the visions the are never the visions are never clear. They only, it's a glimpse of what is going to happen. So, so when he sees that she's dying, it doesn't show him anything else but her dying true, at childbirth. So true. he's like, I need to prevent this. Yoda's the only one that would have been able to see more, but not all force visions are accurate or yeah. even like descriptive. Like it's very brief moments. It's also another. It's, so going back to episode five, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but when Luke wrong. goes with them. <laughs> and he's like, and then there's that moment where Vader knows that he's with them, and like Luke makes that connection too. He's like, I'm endangering the mission. I shouldn't have come. Well, no shit. That's what Obi and Yoda were telling you, but you didn't want to listen. True, 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 true. You wanted to go, but it's like, oh, I'm endangering the mission. Yeah, we kind of knew that. Uh, yeah. That's why we didn't want told you. apples to go over there. <laughs> So if Luke know. wasn't on the ship, do you think they would have still known that they were going to Endor? Or no? Yes. 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 It seems like they already kind of knew because without Luke being there, they already set up the trap. And then when they when they found out Luke was going, they're like, "Oh, this is this is perfect. This is exactly what we want." Oh yeah, so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like even in Cloud City, like they they set up Cloud a trap City. there to just take care of everyone. I mean, it was to lure Luke out. Dude, yes. that Cloud City trap. Mm. That was Dark Vader just waiting at the table. Hello. Give me a <laughs> lightsaber, that, boy. Was, that was a good trap. Fun fact, that, that awesome. scene was only done like once or twice that, where he caught the lightsaber. That was it. it was, really? It like, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. All it right. was like he... Oh, real quick though, I was talking about episode two, but it actually goes to one. What's it called? So, do we not talk about mini chlorians anymore? In I people, love how we don't right? talk about that. I love like this. so. It's kind of like in episode one, it was just like there. It's like yeah, there's no actual force. It's just microscopic yeah. cells. Yeah, you have a lot of mini chlorians and those things. They they help with like the force and all that stuff. But like in episodes three and seven, what they kind of did was they're like, the midichlorians is really like something that we can identify like to connect to the force, to, to show how strong or how weak someone is in the force. It's not the force. The force is still ominous. It's something that we could measure through the force. Mm -hmm. It's like a bridge, which I kind of- level, think, essentially. Yeah, which, which is nice. I like how they fix that instead of saying, these cells are the force. It's nothing mystical, a giant. I'm like, F science. I want mystical. <laughs> I don't want Quiet, science. Quiet gun just like, let me take your blood, little boy. And it's like, wow, you got a lot <laughs> I was of gonna say, I was gonna say, say it, like, <laughs> The mom just hey. like, what are you doing to my son out there? <laughs> right. Anakin, get right. your butt back in here. <laughs> I'm just making sure he's not sick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then there's Padme, Padme watching from the house as well. Like, yeah, Anakin. Get she's your like blood putting her. Tested. She's putting her hand down her pants. Like, oh yeah, you get your blood tested. Everyone was coming after Anakin. That's where, <laughs> and oh, then George was like, Misa, like this. <laughs> oh my god, that's what happens when you're the chosen man. Everyone <laughs> wants a piece of the chosen one. <laughs> I saw a meme right. where it was uh, Obi Wan talking to Padme about it's like the father's Anakin, isn't it? She's like, what if I told you Misa been a bad girl? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> and you just see Obi Wan turn. He's like, <laughs> like that shocked face afterwards. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh, that would have been That's hilarious. hilarious. That would have been funny. Oh, that yeah. would have been hilarious. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna tell. Did I tell you? About, I told you about the R two, but I probably didn't tell Panda about this. Well, let's tell the audience. Okay, so everyone, what's it called? So I heard this before, but so. Uh, prequels whenever uh anakin would go on a mission and he always had r2 with him r2 would always you know he would be like oh you know r2 stay with the ship or oh r2 come with me so the last time r2 uh sees anakin was on mustafar in which anakin says hey, r2 stay at the ship but r2 is like dude like it's gonna go down man like i need to come with you but he stays at the ship anyways anakin doesn't come back so when luke finally gets with r2 we see like people have noticed that r2 even though people say like oh r2 stay at the ship or r2 do this 
he always goes with that person because yeah. the level of trust and like I, I might never see you again. I'm like R2 dude, my fails. <laughs> and then when he never yeah. saw Luke again, he just shut down. And that, yeah, and that's right. Trilogy. He's like, yeah, everyone keeps on dying. We're just gonna shut down. Hello, darkness, my old. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of what caused him to shut down too was the fact that okay, Anakin told me to stay back, and I never saw him again. And then that was like a big loss to him because that's, you know, it's massive. And that exactly. And then he warmed up to Luke and he got super close to Luke. And then Luke just leaves again. And it's just like, well, shit, that's two of the same like bloodline that has left me. What am I doing wrong? Like, let me just power down. Like, I can't, I can't disappoint anybody if I, do, if I just power down. I'll just keep his location yeah. secret and just go to sleep. <laughs> and then so, see, right? yo, it's just like, What's up? I can see. Lupio has been like owned <laughs> the whole series. Like everyone just dogs on this man, and I'm like, yeah, he doesn't know when to shut up. But this man is so knowledgeable about so exactly. much. Like in the Clone Wars, he's actually useful for a lot of things. But like, yeah, I swear the sequels they just like literally took a crap on this man. I'm like, yeah, well, even dang. in the trilogies, he was very. I know Han dogged on yeah. him a lot, but in the trilogies, definitely helped a lot. Uh, What's it called? Like with, with like Jabba and stuff like that, and uh, yeah. with, even with the yeah the Ewoks, they they saw him as like a as a god or a something god. like that. And basically, that's how they didn't die with <laughs> Han and Luke Get and eaten. Chewie. Yeah, Green so, Inferno. <laughs> well, Luke kind of helped that one because he was like, "Tell well, yeah, them the, if they don't listen to you, you're going to use your magic or whatever." Oh, and yeah. they didn't believe him, and then all of a sudden, you just see C three PO being lifted by the force from unless C three PO did that himself. It was actually Jar Jar. Yeah, <laughs> it was Jar Jar. Misa, protect no, um, my kid. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that kind of broke me with C3PO was, and this made no sense to me, this dude is fluent in six million languages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You mean to tell me that he can't translate the, the lettering or the wording on the knife that they needed because it was illegal? Yes, because of the time he was programmed in the prequels, it's through the Jedi Temple. Like, he made them, but what he got them gold-plated, and they had to do... Because the Jedis were the law at that time, so they're like, yeah. you don't translate this stuff. Like, you, you can translate it, but you cannot read it back. You can know it, but you can't say nothing about it. Oh, and so, so that's, why that, he, that's why he wasn't able to actually say it. He's like, oh, I can do it. I already know what it is. I just can't say, I just it. Can't like, say it. I am literally bound by law not to say it. Unless you just wipe me off. clean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so that's another thing that broke me too was them having to wipe everything from uh, him. That was sad, yeah. And like the whole like I'm just looking at my friends for the last time. It's like, and it's a picture oh. of the original trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> None of them. It's just right. like the old game. <laughs> it's the old cast. <laughs> <laughs> they all put the the uh, posters for all exactly. The they all have their medals on. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, I think I think this was a good talk. I mean, there's a lot more we could go into for sure, but yep. um, definitely let us know in the comments your thoughts on Star Wars and everything because we would love to hear that. Uh, we'll probably do more Star Wars podcasts in the future. Um, we'll do, you know, anime ones. We'll do some comic book ones and some unrelated nerd ones, but definitely nerd oriented. Uh, but I mean, I appreciate you guys for watching. We all appreciate you staying through to the end. If you're still staying through to it, um, don't forget to like and subscribe, share it to your friends, your family, uh, you know, your mom on your, on your deathbed, whatever. I'm Captain Zeus. That's Nova Burst. And that is... Panda, aka relatable panda, aka panda, 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 yep. panda, 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 pan